The Aperture Gallery is located in the EMU on the University of Oregon campus, which is located on Kalapuya Ilihi, the traditional indigenous homeland of the Kalapuya people. We thank the Native Strategies Group for our statement. For more information, please visit our link tree, linktr.ee forward slash UO Visual Arts. Okay, we're recording. Um, and then if you could just start by introducing yourself, your practice, what you do, and what you majored in. Sure. Well, my name is Ugo Chuku Akabike. I go by Ugo for short. One, because that's who I've known myself as for the last 20 some odd years. And also because a friend of mine named Wade once told me that there's a certain magic to three letter names. Obviously he missed it by one letter, but I stuck with Ugo. So um, I'm a recent graduate of the University of Oregon, class of 2020, go Ducks. And I'm a multimedia artist, multimedia being digital, mostly graphic design, illustration, that kind of work. And the physical side of that multimedia is mostly pen and paper illustrations. And I'm also a photographer. Yes, the work mostly included into the show Fond Reminiscence. So I started my career at the University of Oregon with an art major, and I was taking a lot of art classes because I loved art. I loved art history, I loved art making, and I loved everything about it. But I knew I wanted to finish with a little bit more than just an art degree. So I took classes in business and I took classes in computer science, and I found that I really loved those two topics, but it was a little too late in my career to finish with either of those because I had too many art classes taken already. So I finished with an art and technology major, which I really loved. It gave me a good framework for how to think creatively about problem solving. But I also finished with a business minor, which gave me a more practical sense about how to get things done. Uh, along the way, I found other classes, but those are the two that I finished with. So I got my start in photography really through the Jordan Sitzer Museum of Art when I was there for a class that met there once. It was about exploring identity and representation. And I happened to be talking to the director of education. Um, and I was telling her about all the things I loved about the museum. And she told me, you know, you could work here if you wanted to. And I thought, yeah, okay, cool, um, whatever. Uh, I didn't really think she was being serious, but then a week later, she handed me a job application. And the next year I was working with the Jordan Sitzer Museum of Art. I went from just wanting to have one of my photographs on the walls in the museum to being displayed there over five times over the course of three years. And I went on to have my work displayed at the museum. I went on to have my work displayed across the campus up to seven times, including the five with the Jordan Center Museum of Art. So my message would be to people who walk into a museum and think that they could never have their art on the walls is just try, you never know. You may just get there. Perfect, yeah. that was amazing. Next, if you could just kind of give us an overview of the exhibition, um, what pieces are in the show and kind of how you chose the pieces, brought them together for the show. So Fond Reminiscence is a show about all the moments and times in life that are easily missed. All the things that you don't really think twice about as they're happening, but when things aren't going so well later on in your life, you find yourself going back to these times and remember them fondly. So after the UO Visual Arts team reached out to me and offered me a space in the show, which I'm incredibly grateful for, I started looking back through my photo catalog and thinking about what I would like to put into the show, because I knew it had to be photography. That's just how I've been um, expressing myself and my identity for the last, the greater part of the last five years. And I found myself going through my travel photography and all of the moments that I was taking pictures of and not really thinking twice about. And when I find that I need an escape in my mind, I go back and I look through these photos and I, I really enjoy the time that I had spent. And I didn't even realize that I was making memories that I would look back to years down the line. So I found a few photos that really captured those, those ideas. And I put them together in order of, not really a specific order. But whenever I'm working, I try to keep one goal in mind. I do my best to be present and capture the moment because what I find when I try to chase a creative endeavor very aggressively, it just escapes me and it, it doesn't really come back. So I lay down a few basic guidelines and then let the work come to me. And that's what I did with the show. 
The first image up is the Posse. And this image was taken in Amsterdam. And I was walking around and I rounded this corner and I saw these large groups of buildings that were very vertical in their structure. And they seemed like they, they may have been welcoming. I don't know if it was the color scheme or the people I was around or, I'm not entirely sure, but maybe under the different circumstances as if the colors were a bit warmer and it might've been night, um, it may not have felt the same, but this one seemed like they might've just been a welcoming party to the neighborhood. So the second image is the stolen glance. And I wanted to invert the idea of the balcony and the voyeur. Uh, you can see that from the balcony, this person has a perspective, a top-down bird's eye view of everything that's going on. But using the frame of the branches and the camera and the buildings and the verticality of the buildings, I tried to make it seem as though from our perspective, the first person perspective that we could now view the person who was meant to be viewing. So for the third, the commanders, I'm not sure what it was about it, but it just, this photo doesn't ask you if you'd like to view it. It just instructs you to look at it. It commands your attention. And I like the, the idea of three. Um, it seems like there's a structure and an order to these three bulbs. It is just a light post, but it feels like it could just be it could be more than just a light post. So the fifth image in the show is called the Envied Seat, and it kind of has a lot of importance to me. This is the one that I look back to the most frequently, um, especially during COVID, because I found that I really enjoyed being in a plane. Sometimes when I find that I need something to listen to and I don't want it to be music and I don't want it to be words or a podcast or anything like that. Sometimes, as weird as it may sound, I just throw on sounds of the airplane cabin, just the low whirring hum of the airplane cabin and I close my eyes and I'm instantly transported to just sitting in a plane, falling asleep, probably on someone's shoulder, bumping arms with someone trying to fight for the, <laughs> for the armrest. But this image, it, it is very well framed and it has a lot of contrast that I, if you spend time with it, you can see. And if you don't want to, it's, it's also okay too. It's just a nice looking picture, but you can see that in the bottom center of the screen, there's a lot of curvature from the plane, from the top of the engine to the center of the engine, even through the right angles, right? They're bolted on the engine. Um, when they meet at a right angle, they still meet on a, a sort of curve. And it's framed by the window, which on the right-hand side, it's a long sloping curve. And on the left-hand side, it's more of a gradual curve. And if you compare that to the mountain, the mountain does not have very much curvature. It has a lot of jagged edges and natural deformities, non-man-made uh, deformities. Um, there's a lot of contrast and a lot of, I think, symbolism to be had, much more by people other than I, but I, I really enjoy looking at this image. There's a lot to be had here. So the sixth image in the show is called the impalpable. And I believe this best replicates the idea of the fond reminiscence, capturing those moments in life that you don't even realize are things that you are going to have a memory later on until you have something that reminds you of that time. This picture is exactly that for me. Although there are things that can have that ability to put you back in place like music or food or an object or anything like that, it just happens to be this photograph that best does it for me. It does this because it's so ordinary. It's so in medias res, which means in the middle of things. There are people walking away and people walking towards me. It's a little bit dark and you can't really tell what's going on, but it's still bright enough from the top lighting that you can see enough of what you need to. Um, this picture is just so emblematic of things that you don't really realize that you'll, you will remember, but become important later on. So the seventh image in the show is called the naive optimist. And 
I think it's just the composition of the flowers and the darkness of the city, as well as the nighttime lights. And it feels like those flowers are young and hopeful and innocent and just waiting to get out there. And the nighttime lights, although they can seem alluring, they may not represent the best of what those flowers need. And if you can see, there's a lot of distance between the nighttime and the glare and the, the glistening of those lights and the subtle, dull nature of those flowers. The flowers may not be ready for what the nighttime has to offer. And that's what I really appreciate about this image. So the eighth image in the show is called The Determined. And I think you can really feel the determination and the essence of this picture from the hard lines to the, the clear direction of, the, of all the lines in the, in the photo. In the bottom left hand, you have this strong brick that is curving at an angle. It has no other way to go except in the direction that it's heading. You can see that there are clear lines in the water and the boats, it's all leading you forward. Again, you have this perspective of the first person view. You're close enough to these buildings that you can feel the scale of them and you can feel them rise. And you're just far away enough from everything else that um, it puts you in the place, it puts you in the perspective. So that was fun reminiscence. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and learn more about myself and the work. Thank you, big thank you to the visual arts team for allowing me to display my work and presenting an avenue for people to display their work, be it student or professional artists. It really is incredible to have a place to do that and grow as an artist. If you'd like to keep up with me, you can find me on Instagram at Ugo Akabike and on my website, ugoakabike.com. Thank you.